All right, take two. So we have the second pentagonal hexacontahedron here, just printed out. Uh, first attempt was with 100% infill. I found that it was a bit hard, so this one at 25% infill seems to have a little bit of a squish, uh, so it should bounce a lot better. The uh, doesn't seem to have any failures like it did last time, and the uh, supports seem to just be stripping straight off, so this should be a really fast uh, post-processing, and then we'll get right into the bounce. All right, so post-processing took like half the time of the original one, and uh, no real aberrations. Um, going with the linear supports on this versus the uh, tree-like supports that I did on the other one really made a difference as far as removing them and any sort of aberrations that happened uh, on the surface as a result. I guess it's just kind of the nature. Yeah, there was some failures in the original one. And what I usually do in post-processing for a TPU is a little bit of heat until the surface reaches uh, glass temperature. And that takes care of a lot of the uh, roughness to it, smooths it out. Uh, you got to be really careful, though, because it can cause some issues. Uh, but overall, it looks like a lot better. It looks like it's kept a lot of its form. So, And you get a little bit more squeeze on these guys. So it should bounce a whole lot better, but let's get right to it and see how it does. All right, so we got some new angles for the camera. So let's just hit record on the high speed. And let's get wide this time, have an easier time. Not letting it get away. So I'm putting this at about chest height. Uh, best side down. And... All right, so I looked over the footage and I noticed something rather interesting. Uh, while we still had a lot of the directional changes that happen depending on where it lands, um, because of the decrease in weight and the springiness, what we saw was a lot more uh, bounce uh, in the normal sense of the word, like think of a regular um, bouncy ball. Uh, because of the springiness, what I didn't think about was the flattening that would happen of the object as it coming, comes in contact because of the rubberiness. Uh, so while the angles are here, they're being flattened out momentarily as it strikes and then bounces back. So what we're seeing is a lot less uh, chaotic movement of the ball. What we still see that that spin, that reversal spin that happens, but we're not seeing as much you know, bounce off to the side as we saw with the original object. Um, surprisingly, there is a large weight difference. This is 72 grams, and the new ball with 25% infill was 27 grams. So um, even with the damage, uh, we saw a lot more of the type of directionality that we would expect with these kinds of angles um, with the less bouncy ball, allowing it to operate with the chaotic corners that we were hoping for, basically. So, interesting fact, um, you know, bouncy balls with weird shapes make a little bit less of a difference uh, compared to more solid objects. So, we now have a solution.